Hello, Pisces. My apologies for the sound quality on your reading. But as an I'm sorry, I hope you still love me. I'm going to do an additional uh, little bonus read for you, Piscean. I hope you can hear me now. My mic sounds nice. Check one. Okay, so a person of interest for you guys, whoever it is that you uh, came to this reading inquiring about. I'm going to look at their thoughts towards you. I'm going to look at what is blocking them from you. And I'm also going to look at how they feel towards you. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to look at their desires, their fears, their actions towards you, what they think and what they feel. How about that? Let's just go all in. No holds barred, Agnetta, son of a gun. So spirit, let us know about Pisces, person of interest. What are their desires? What are their fears? Their next actions? What are they thinking and what are they feeling? And what not or whatever. Pisces. Okay, sorry. I got a little excited there, you know. Thank you, spirit. Thank you. Their desires, their fears. Next action steps towards Pisces. What they're thinking and what they're feeling, Pisces. Okay, their desires. Mm, we got the two of chalices. Their desire is union with you in a emotional way a very tasteful emotional way they want to harmonize with you and whatnot or whatever harmonize with you i mean this in a very physical sense clearly that's what it is that they're desiring they want to make sweet passionate lovings to you but it's more in the sense of a closeness and an emotional connection more than anything else. It's not just a physical thing. But what they're fearing, ooh, interesting. I think they're afraid of giving into their desires with the Queen of Wands. They fear giving in to the desire and the passion and the emotions that they have for you and that overtaking them and them completely losing control. They view you in a sense like they, well, let me say it like this. They fear your power. And the power is uh, your powers of seduction, like your sensuality. It's intoxicating to them and they lose all control and continence in a sense. And they feel as if, and to me, this would necessarily imply that it's a person who's used to being in control of themselves. And they feel almost as if, if they were to give in to you or given to what their desires are, that that would mean that you would gain dominion over them. They don't want to lose power. Their next actions, <laughs> little tuckus. We have the Knight of Chalices. It's frustration. There's so much that they want to say to you, but it's almost as if they can't find the words to get it out. It's knowing how I feel, sensing how I feel, thinking about how I feel all day, every day but not really knowing how to approach you, not knowing how to get what's inside of me out because of my fears. But the truth of the matter is, is the fact that they desire to, um, just to connect with you, to be one with you, you know? They want to express their truth to you in a sense. It's like a part of them is used to being like a lone wolf so to speak, like somebody who's kind of like a loner and they just do their own thing. But I think it's partly frustrating to them because they want you so bad, but they're afraid of you equally as much. But there's a need to reconcile with the self and there's a, a desire to want to express that, but not quite knowing how, not knowing if they should send you a text message or an email or if they should say it in person or should I call her over the phone? It's kind of going back and forth between this wanting but fearing it but that fear is still not deterring the wanting 
So what it's looking like going forward for them, I think they're ultimately going to contact you in some way, shape, form, or fashion, but it's just not quite knowing how, how they're going to do that. Presently, it's them trying to figure out how it is they should do that. But I feel like the inspiration is going to hit them nonetheless. You know what I'm saying? So, thinking about how they're thinking. Oh, are you with someone else? We have the Ten of Swords. What they're thinking, oh, that's a fear. Okay, I get it. They're afraid that you're with someone else. Or that they waited too long. That's what they're afraid of. Because I don't know... Um, I don't know what you've been doing. I don't know if it's something you did intentionally. I mean, like presentation wise, I don't know if it's like maybe like on social media, you're alluding to the idea, you know, that you might be with someone or if you're just not posting at all and that's making them kind of question. But it's the, the thing with them is, is that, um, Man, a, a cross watcher is going to have a field day if they're watching this. I'm just realizing that I totally did not think about cross watcher until just now. But the whole thing is, is they think that you're with someone else. So it's like they felt all of these things. Their fear prevented them from speaking on it. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and now they're afraid that they waited too long. And that you're with someone else and they kind of ruin their chance in a sense is what they're afraid of whoa that's what they're thinking so they think you're with you're dealing with somebody else that's very interesting i don't know why my energy keeps getting brought back to this queen of wands card i feel like <clears throat> this is somebody uh they didn't do enough. They got comfortable. When they were with you, they got comfortable. They got comfortable thinking that the door would always be open is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. So they're thinking they kind of missed their opportunity and that it's a done deal. Now what they're feeling, oh, that's so sweet. What they feel, they feel that you understand them in a way that no one else does, right? That you get them. But I also feel like there's some growing up that they need to do in some ways or another, because I feel like they're a little emotionally immature. And it's kind of like you think about little boys in school with little girls and like, you know, a girl hits your son and you're all like, oh, she likes you, you know, like those mixed signals. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting from them. It's like when they fall hard for someone, and I don't feel that they fell hard for anyone in the way that they fell hard for you. It makes them feel vulnerable. But instead of allowing themselves to give in to this, right, and to be enveloped into this union, it's they, re they react in rebellion. You know what I'm saying? So instead of pulling you close, they push you away because it's the fear of a loss of control with them. But it's almost a battle that's going on within them because it's scary for them. But I mean, in a sense, it's emotionally immature because the truth is, is if you're feeling this, you know, give into it because you have someone, which would be you, who would give into it with them. It wouldn't be unrequited. It's like everything, all the chips they would put into the basket, you would equally match each and every one of them. That's the only thing you've ever wanted to do. But for them, it, it's this fear of vulnerability. And they're pissed at themselves because they want to be vulnerable so bad. But it's just that double-mindedness. But the way that they feel about you is that no one understands them better than you. They're aware that like, you know, their soul, you know, their truth, but it's more or less a, um, a battle of the ego because it's like every promise you've ever made to them, you've kept. And they know that there's a, a loyalty and a consistency there with you. They feel that and they want to give in to that, but there's a need for them to overcome themselves in order to do that. Man, that's heavy. 
Well, Pisces, that has been your little bonus read. You guys let me know in the comments what you think, and hopefully the sound was on Fleek Bay. But I love your face. Deuces. I'm sorry. Again, sorry. Love you. Do you still love me? You promise? Do you promise? I promise I'll put all my chips in. Okay, deuces. <laughs>